metal wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code, 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 Science can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Science can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code. Wow, look at that. The fertilizer worked. Holy carrots, this thing's a world record. Incredible, Barry. Your pumpkin's a thing of wonder. Just imagine all the pies you could make from this giant vegetable. Not if they eat it all up. Who? <sighs> the caterpillars are real bad this year. I can't cut my pumpkin yet. It's still green, but they don't care. They'll gobble it up anyway. We'll see about that. I'll give these caterpillars the old one, too. I'll knock their antennas caterpillars off. Caterpillars don't have antennae, and we should never resort to violence. They just want to eat like the rest of us. Ha! I bet I can take care of these bugs faster than you can. <laughs> I think not. You're on. All right, soldiers. Our mission is to protect Barry's giant pumpkin from hungry invaders. We must wage an all-out war on these caterpillars with force. Got it? Roger. Thanks for your help. I just want to prove to Crash that calm, careful planning can sometimes be more effective than sheer force when trying to solve a problem. When the enemy insects advance from these trees, always listen to our greatest warrior, me! And when the bugs come our way, I'll be waiting at Fort Pumpkin. Hmm? Wally, you're our first line of defense. We'll put you here. Right. Now, after the massive caterpillar army tramples you down... Hang on. Tramples me down? I thought we had the advantage. This is war, soldier, and we are outnumbered. I'll be on the pumpkin, cheering you on through your violent battle. Just take out those insects. We honor your sacrifice. Have we considered a different plan? <laughs> Maybe, uh, diplomacy? I don't need a diploma to tell me that that kind of talk is for the losing side. I have a degree in winning battles. Are our supplies military grade? Military grade? My military grade is A+. Plus. And you'll both be getting grades also. Ooh. How's this? We build a moat all around and fill it up with water. Hmm. It might flood the pumpkin's root system. And we're dealing with winged insects that could fly over the moat anyway. <laughs> but How close. about a giant explosion? Just a thought. How would that help the pumpkin? With a giant explosion, there may not be a pumpkin anymore, but there won't be insects. Once Wally's down, Chico goes in and attacks the bugs with everything he's got until they're gone. Got it? Perfect. Once most of the enemy has been taken care of, if there are any survivors, I'll bravely go in and finish off the last of them. There's a 100% chance this will work about 50% right. Sound good? just hide the pumpkin or something. You know, put a disguise on it. Wait a second. You're right. The bugs can't eat what they can't see. An invisible pumpkin. Then I'll win my bet. I, I mean, we'll help Barry, of course. That's impossible. How will that work? Nothing's impossible. If it hasn't been done yet, we can be the first. And for this task, I think we'll use a little thing called molecular self-assembly. With it, we can make almost any material. 
Molecular self-assembly just means the ability of molecules to attach to each other without any help from outside forces. Everything in the universe is attracted to each other because of gravity. But planets don't crash into each other because they're too heavy. The smaller the object is, the greater their ability to stick to each other. Okay, even smaller than apples, smaller than seeds. Now we're getting somewhere. If two tiny particles meet, they'll stick to each other like glue. This happens on a huge scale with lots of particles meeting each other every second. Did you know that's how dust forms? Imagine something a thousand times smaller than dust. That's what nanotechnology works with. Nanoparticles stick to each other really, really well and make structures. They're so good at sticking to each other because of that thing we talked about earlier, self-assembly. If we could learn to harness that power, we could create almost anything. For example, we can make rubber for boots. We can make iron for horseshoes. We can even make magnets. And plastic for toys. Now, imagine being able to combine all the best traits of these different materials to make something entirely new. Materials that don't exist in nature are called metamaterials, and they can be super cool. What does that have to do with invisibility? I've got something in mind, my fine Antarctic friend. Here they come. We know that invisibility is not real, except in your point, which I can't see. With science, anything is possible. And look here, our pumpkin saver! Light is the reason we can see everything around us. Rays fall onto an object and bounce back into our eyes. That's how we see things in our minds. The reason it's hard to see when it's dark is that there's nothing to bounce off the objects. No light source, no information. And poor Crash will have to stumble around in the dark to find his snack. If we could create a material that doesn't let any light bounce off and doesn't change the light's direction, it would be invisible. Something like that doesn't exist yet, but with metamaterials, it just might one day. And that's exactly what we're going to need today. <laughs> oh, hey, bugs. You're looking a little bit flushed. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Incredible! I want to see what it looks like! Hey, all I see is dark! Um, hello? <laughs> that makes sense. Light is passing around you, so you can't see anything. How weird. What good is it for spying, then? Disappointing. It's not for spying. We have to save Barry's pumpkin. Remember where you put this thing, or we'll lose it. <laughs>
Do you feel lucky, Bugs? Well, do ya? <laughs> Under control! Why would you take me from the battlefield at the crucial moment? Now that pumpkin is a goner! Oh, is that what you think? Look for yourself, soldier. Go on and see. <laughs> ah! I have guessed! <laughs> Unfortunately, looks like you're all out of luck. <laughs> you're too late. I ate it all. How? Oh, where did you move it? Military secrets? Scientific secrets. Is that, is that a real firebird? Of course not. It's her first cousin on her mother's side. And here, I'm posing for Picasso and his famous dub of peace painting. I never would have believed it. Yes, not too many people notice the similarities. Well, this photo looks amazingly familiar. My good friend, this entire story happened specifically because of you. How's that? Why don't I remember anything about it? Well, that's because you weren't there. Honestly, it's not getting very clear. Oh, it's the most amazingly funny story. <laughs> Everything started, of course, because of one of your usual experiments. Careful, in your hands lies the future of mankind. Whew, judging from this, mankind has a very heavy future. Holy carrots! It looks like a monument to that plate that I broke last week. <laughs> Maybe it was a very famous dish. Very funny. This device, my witty friend, sends radio signals into space. You should have just said so then, it's a radio. Technically, yes, but this isn't an ordinary radio. In my signal, there is a friendly encoded message to alien civilizations. There you go. You what, believe in aliens? Indeed I do. After all, Earth isn't the only planet in the universe. In our galaxy, there are about 200 billion stars. And at least one planet is spinning around every one of them. What? And there's an alien city on every one of them? Unfortunately, no. But given that quantity of planets, the likelihood that life exists on at least one of them is very, very high. Be more specific, please. Is there any way to determine the probability? It is possible. There is even a special formula for calculating the number of civilizations in our galaxy. This equation was thought up in 1961 by American scientist Frank Drake. Cool! I wish I knew what all these squiggles meant. Oh, that is elementary. The first factor indicates how many stars are born in the galaxy every year. The second factor, what portion of these stars have planets? The third factor shows what share of them are suitable for sustaining life. The fourth factor is the probability of life originating on the planet given the right conditions. 
The fifth factor is the probability of the genesis of intelligent life on inhabited planets. And the sixth factor shows the percentage of civilizations which would be capable of contact. And the last factor at last. The seventh one indicates the time during which these civilizations exist and perhaps transmit radio signals into space. If we multiply all these values, then we will get the number of civilizations which are ready to accept a radio signal from our planet. Incredible! So does that mean that aliens really exist? Well, what did I tell you? You see, there's even a formula for it. And they might receive our signal at any given moment? And arrive here. Theoretically, yes. However, we don't know a majority of the values in this formula yet and can therefore only assume. Uh, uh. <laughs> we can't have all this garbage around for our fellow intelligent life form brothers. Everything needs to be in tip-top shape. Cosmic shape. We need to warn everyone immediately. What? To us? To fly. Space Brothers in Arms? What? Any minute now? We'll all be darned. Are you ready for contact with alien civilizations? Earth welcomes you, dear visitor, who plowed at a great hurtling speed through boundless space to extend a friend of handship to our planet. We have it's long so waited small. for your visit. Prepare Perhaps for we're it for quite all some too time. big. Our expectations yeah. have all looks been like a tadpole. Barry! How uncultured. And I ask you to accept this gift as a sign of our readiness for contact out of the goodness, as they say, of our hearts. He respects traditions. And now for the cultural part of our program. This is a green planet. This is winter. This is summer. This is a tasty little cutlet. This is a poem about love. This is a shovel. This is a pouch. And a few more poems. An automotive carburetor. And this is the favorite carrot. These are dumbbells for exercise. These are weed and garden beds. And this is a puzzle. Hide and seek. This is a creative rush. It's a diesel fuel engine. It's a Sweep after. These are my glasses in a case. This is a black Casanova. These are piano passages. These are real landscapes. These are boats of fuselages. This is so. And this is that. This is a bicycle belt. This is a book called Elocution. This is a green planet. This, this is a favorite. Tell me, my friend, whether you are authorized to choose a worthy Earthling for a return trip to your planet. Dibs, I'll go on a social visit. Fly away on a spaceship. Hmm, Crash, certainly your application is more than worthy. 
But in my opinion, the one who should go should be... The most beautiful! He must be the most beautiful, or she. Nine! Contact between civilizations is primarily an exchange of achievements in the area of technical progress! Uh-huh. I'll go and learn about their agricultural achievements. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, I wouldn't mind either. But it's very dangerous! An airless spaceship G-forces, I mean! <laughs> Only someone very well prepared could withstand such an experience. <clears throat> I'm, I'm all right where I am, and weightlessness makes my horns itch. And nevertheless, I believe that I would be the best candidate... <laughs> Why is that exactly? My friends, why are you torturing this unfortunate creature? That's it. We're starting an interplanetary conflict. And... And nevertheless, my friends, allow me to ask, why are you torturing this poor frog? Uh, uh, a frog? But what about aliens? Visitors? How about your space radio? Didn't it work? Oh, I see you've been, as they say, caught up in this topic. I should note that sending a radio impulse to other civilizations is not the only way to search for fellow intelligent life forms. It is possible to investigate planets which move around the stars similar to our sun and at the same distance as Earth. They are about 150 million kilometers away. If the star's radiation is greater than the sun's, then life becomes possible at greater distances from it and vice versa. For example, if radiation from the star is more than the sun's by a factor of four, then mortal life becomes possible at a distance from the star of 300 million kilometers. Unfortunately, unexplored planets of this kind are very far from us, and it is almost impossible to see them in a telescope. Therefore, we can only guess about their existence from their brightness. A planet rotates around a star and hides a part of its radiation from the astronomer. If we periodically record the reduction of the star's brightness, then it is possible to calculate the period of the planet's rotation and its relative size. Then we calculate the mass of the star and distance to it in order to understand whether life is possible on that planet. It's estimated that in our galaxy, life could exist on approximately 11 billion planets. And, and if we have fellow intelligent space brothers in arms, then our radio signal will only reach them after many, many years. Is something wrong? Uh, and there you have the story. <laughs> Contact between civilizations, space brothers in arms. My friend, you don't listen to me at all. Did you see that? But that's... Phenomenal! What am I to do? What am I to do? There's food all around me. I'll put on a kilo or two. So, residents, you're starving, I bet. Okay, we'll get you fed now. <laughs> that turbulence knocked me sideways. What on earth was that? Huh? Residents, are you okay? Now, where were we? Huh? <laughs> Well, I never. Well, what's going on with me? <laughs> and who am I now? <laughs> Daco. You curious side effect. This is very odd indeed. Are you up to your funny business again? 
Mr. Experimenters. It seems like the anomaly isn't only spreading from the epicenter. Yeah, yeah! This is because of the gender multiplication in the homology. But of course, hence the simplicial environmental distortion of... Now, if the parameters are... Earth! Stop with the nerd babble! And just tell me what's going on normally. My friend, it all began as a perfectly safe experiment to study parallel realities. But now we ourselves are parallel to our reality. Nobody can see us, and nobody can hear us. The experiment can be stopped with one click of this button. See for yourself. What are you doing? I haven't even fed resonance yet. It's useless. In our current state, we can't have any effects on our material objects. Just have a look at it. Apparently, this unique device from the future is able to make contact with parallel realities. Phenomenal! Compression! Now, at least, we can write messages to get help. But who will read it? We're the only ones. Resonance. Hmm? How are you there in our reality, then? And with no one to feed you. Resonance! Can you hear me? It's amazing that your pet stayed in the same state. Most likely, his glass aquarium saved him from the radiation. Ah! This worm will rescue us! You just need to give him a sign to press the button, can you? And it won't hurt him? It's not so simple, my resourceful friends. A sign that is obvious to us may be completely incomprehensible to the worm. Our whole culture, all human communication, is built around signs. When we hear the word giraffe, we immediately imagine an animal with spotted skin and a very long neck. The word giraffe is a sign signifying this very animal. The letter G with which the word giraffe begins is also a sign, and this means the sound G. When a motorist sees a red circle with a white rectangle in the middle, he realizes that this is a sign for stop, and that he cannot go any further. This is also a sign. We are surrounded by a phenomenal number of different signs and symbols. Not surprisingly, there is also a special science that helps sort out these signs. It's called semiotics, from the Greek word semion, a sign. So, in semiotics, it is customary to separate signs into... Why are you overcomplicating everything with your silliness? I'll just write something for a little resonance myself. Hey, no big deal. Well, let's see how it's going to work out for you. Right then. Okay, my sweet little buddy. I remember you when you were still very little. You were always sharp and clever, just like me. There was never any task that was too... Every time I think back on those days, it warms my heart. <laughs> so the point is, in order for us to be together, you have to press the darn button. I'm pretty sure that you can, uh, er, do it. Take care, you're Barry. Hey. <laughs> How could you? Resonance! I could have foreseen this response reaction, and I'm going to explain why. The most extensive class of signs are character signs. Their values are the result of an agreement within a group of people. So, 
A group of people agreeing among themselves that this is the sign means the sound F, and for example, this sign means the number five. Our words are also symbolic symbols. At the same time, different people designate the same thing with different signs and symbols. What we call a cat, the French call "cha," the Italians call gatto, and in German, katze. At this point, someone has agreed. Even numbers can be expressed in different ways. For example, the number five can be denoted by an Arabic numeral, a Roman numeral, a combination of digits and binary code, five dots, and many more words meaning five in many different languages. In this case, the symbols themselves are nothing more than ordinary scribbles that do not have any natural meaning. Therefore, their meaning is not there to be understood by an animal, which we can see in the example of your pet. Hmm, now it's not so easy, is it? So now what are we gonna do? And I... Hey, I've got it! All we need is just a much simpler sign. Huh? Uh-oh, we're doomed. We'll be okay, but who's gonna feed resonance? No. All is not lost. We just need an icon sign. If you would stop interrupting, I can finally explain. Another group of signs are index signs. Index means pointer. The index sign is the reason for what it means. For example, we see smoke and understand somewhere the fire is burning. Smoke is the index of fire. The temperature of 38 and 5 or the rash on the skin is the index of the disease. A knock at the door is an index of someone's desire to enter the room. A lot of talking is an index of taco. Okay, okay, I'm nearly done. The last class of signs is the icon signs. They're somewhat similar to their objects, and it's because of this similarity that they fulfill their role of what they symbolize. Icons on the desktop of a computer are just such signs. For example, the sign print shows a printer, and the sign sound shows a speaker. But sometimes this relationship between the sign and the object begins to weaken. The sign save on most computer programs depicts a floppy disk, a storage medium for information that was used 10 to 15 years ago. Children these days won't remember it, so the sign icon gradually turns into a symbol symbol. And now, the most suitable icon in this case will be... Come on, Resonance! That's it! Yeah, yeah! Come on, Wormy! You can do it! Come on, you little crawler! Come on! Semiotics never let anyone down! Hooray! 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 <laughs> Go on, son! Don't be afraid! All in a little! Nothing to it! Don't stop there! Go ahead and press it! Attention! Damage to the flight stabilization system. Uh, well, I thought so. Yeah. So you see, 
Semiotics is a great science and ever so useful. Yeah, yeah. Semiotics. They're good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just can't understand. If we could touch that ball and move it, why didn't we just hit the button with it? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> well, have to assume that this was also assigned to some extent to all of us. Sample 428, an amoeba from Jupiter. Resistant to sulfuric acid and liquid nitrogen. Wow! You know, I never thought I'd ever have to say this, but discovering life on other planets hasn't been as exciting an experience as I had hoped. Hasn't been as exciting an experience as I'd hoped. People! Check out our latest batch of extraterrestrial organisms. This is bacteria from Venus and microorganisms. Where should we put them? Uh, anywhere you want. We'll go get more. Do you know what I'd like, dear colleague? To not just meet new forms of life, but an intelligent new life form. Imagine how wonderful that would be. Nine, I can't imagine. How could we show our research for the next couple of thousand light years if nothing intelligent in the universe is found? But what about parallel universes? Perhaps their development went a different way and there were alternative forms of intelligence. Well, the device is pretty much almost ready. My friends, I'm delighted to announce that we can now travel between parallel universes. Pin, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. After much research, I found a way to shift through to parallel worlds, you see. This is PSW, a portable space warp I, I invented. The range is three meters. What a cool gadget. Now, let's conduct an experiment on moving through parallel space. Are you ready? Achtung! Nein! 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 Uh, did the teleportation work? Uh, difficult to say. That's wonderful. We will assume that the tests were successful. It's time to take a trip. Come on, everybody, come closer. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, it's a bad idea. Achtung! Is this really another world? Somehow it's not that parallel. Uh, again? Ladies? Gentlemen? Wow, Louie Garrett's. <laughs> Somebody pinch me. Phenomenal. Pardon me, madam. This is mine. Everyone prepare for teleport. Yeah, but... In this parallel universe, there's no intelligent Verstein. <laughs> Achtung! Sorry, what was that? It's just a normal group hallucination. Naturally, but that case. Uh, who wants a cup of tea? Buttercup flowers, lacy ribbons. Phew. Where are we now? If these are their flowers here, <laughs> then what kind of bees have they got? Now that's a flower bed. What? Have we shrunk? Now this is something new. There can surely be other forms of life that we couldn't possibly even imagine. You mean, like this? Holy carrots. That uh -huh. thing's what? Alive? Phenomenal. 
Most likely in this world, development has taken quite a different path. Moving plant. Are you kidding? We have such miracles in our neck of the woods. <laughs> really? First I've heard. You should have studied botany. It's a science. Botany is not often underestimated as a science. But this is one of the most ancient sciences on Earth, just so you know. Our ancestors had to learn quickly to distinguish the poisonous plants from the edible ones. And that was the first form of botany. Scientists today have studied and cataloged almost 350,000 species of various plants. And this number only grows as new ones are discovered all the time. The study of plants opens our civilization to the amazing secrets of nature. This knowledge helps us in agriculture and medicine, in cooking and in industry. And all of this thanks to the most important of the sciences, botany. I thought botany was just a neato word for Chico. Buttercup, flowers, cacti, mushrooms. I'm afraid our knowledge of botany won't be very useful to us. Terrestrial plants are a lot different from these local specimens. Friend, we come in peace for the sake of establishing contact with fellow intelligent life. Guten <sighs> Tag! <sighs> Phenomenal. It understands. Huh? Guten Tag. Nine. Not allowed. Give it back. It's not a toy. Oh, hey, you! Give it back. Buttercup. Give, yeah, it, give it back. back. Hold on. It's come just on. an attempt by the Thank native you. to hey, study come our. Hey, come on. It's beating him. Oh, you little weed. Hey, stop! Get stop. Come, back Come back here! Come back here! Come back here! Come back here! Come back Carefully! Any kind of contact has to be friendly. My friends, be more tolerant! Catch a plant? You kidding me? Wait up! <laughs> you won't get away. Surround him, guys. Huh? Give it back. You shouldn't take what's not yours. <laughs> Wait a sec. Where'd he go? Something tells me this intelligent life form isn't so intelligent. You know, he sure knew how to move. <laughs> Terrestrial plants are actually quite similar, though. Some of them can move around, too, you see. We are all used to plants as creatures that are not particularly mobile. But there are also some very active fellows among them. For example, the sensitive Mimosa pudica. All that it takes is the slightest touch and she immediately hides her leaves. It's this reaction to touch that gave it its nickname. Or, for example, the dancing Desmodium gyrans, which moves quickly and constantly flaunts its leaves. This plant is also known as the telegraph plant. The Desmodium can even dance to music. I'd rather our mimosa hit than these local flower sources. And now how are we gonna get home? It looks like we'll have to once again establish contact with our fellow intelligent life dude. So... A rabbit tracking? This is something new. I got it. I've got the trail. The flower source went that way. This way. Why didn't we just stay home? We've got plenty of our own intelligence. Why are we looking out for new types for? 
You don't seem to have that sense of cosmic loneliness when suddenly you realize that you are the only intelligent species in the whole universe. Stop! Check it out! Look! Wow! This is a clear sign of civilization. Perhaps, in this way, we're being invited to make contact. It's about time to... I've already worked up an appetite. Something's just not right. How's that for making contact? No, uh, regardless, uh, that's a pretty sophisticated tactic for luring hunters, which are apparently of a higher intellectual level. This doesn't prove a single thing. There are plenty of hunters like this where we're from. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, yourself. I'm telling you, we've got plants like that. Carnivorous ones. Normally, plants need no more than sun and water, and all the useful substances they get from the soil. But in some regions where these nutrients are not very good, in order to survive, plants have to become predators. And if you're a predator, then you must be able to hunt. That, of course, is not an easy thing when you're a flower and you can't really move. So certain flowers have adapted themselves to lure their prey with alluring smells to colored petals. A fly flies by, smells the aroma, and thinks the table's been set for him. He sits on a flower and like that, becomes a treat himself. The best known example of one of these plant predators is of course, the Venus flytrap. But in nature, there are many other flowers that can also lure their victims, and not merely for pollination. So this ain't no walk in the park. The flowers around here could even have teeth. We gotta be more careful. In search of other intelligent life forms, a detachment led by Donko was sent to explore parallel worlds. A world of living plants proves not so hospitable, with the friends finding themselves in search of a lost device needed to return home. In addition, what remains a mystery is, are the local inhabitants in fact intelligent, or is their behavior no different to most ordinary plants? The target is not located. How can you hear me? Over? I hear you perfectly. Let's keep looking. Over. We're just going around in circles. Don't you think we've lost the trail? Stay positive, Daco. This expedition was meant to find fellow intelligent life forms, and we're running after a flower that stole our equipment. I would never have seen this coming. Uh, 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 uh. Huh. Daco found a trail. It's uh. this way. Huh. Excellent. Very good work. Hey, good job. Super. Uh, 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 mm. Huh? Darko, are you coming uh, or what? Uh, uh, Check it out. Uh, uh, uh. It's a good thing this flower's tracks glow in the dark, or we'd be here till morning. <gasps> I doubt that. <sighs> Better wait till morning. I can't feel my legs. Agreed. A little break wouldn't hurt, but only for a couple of minutes. <sighs> Excuse me, but would you mind?
night isn't it the wonderful weather the, what am I saying I'm a representative of the scientific world of earth friend we are here in peace in order to establish contact with fellow thinking life forms wait I didn't mean any offense where are you going where are you huh 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 Here anymore. Let's just start over again, can we please? I don't even know where to start. <laughs> uh, allow me to present you with uh, I. Hmm, a bad idea, I'll admit. I was hoping only on meeting. Fellow intelligent life forms, I didn't expect to find something more, something beautiful. <gasps> I'm ready to stay in your world forever. Oh. Daco! Daco! Can you hear me? <gasps> Enchantress. Daco! Is he all right? Coco, are you okay? You had us really worried. N what happened? Where am I? And where is that beautiful stranger? What stranger exactly? I found you passed out in a clearing. Admit it. You picked some sort of flower, didn't you, Mr. Explorer? Uh, yes, I remember something like that. Well, congratulations. Looks like you came across some sort of poisonous plant. In the plant world, although there are some active ones, most of them are immobile creatures and the scourged all around them, the seemingly invisible. They have to defend themselves and so Mother Nature awards them with fragrances. Their own smells protect them well against the pests, such as parsley, dill, thyme, sage, peppermint. Yes, the list is endless, actually. However, what's bad for an insect to us is healthy and tasty. What nature has created for millions of years, like protection, turned out to be an excellent seasoning for us. <laughs> but there are plants that can protect themselves not only from insects, but also from larger creatures. These can be dangerous even for humans. Datura, Belladonna, Billigolov, Oleander, Cerberus. These are just some of the deadly poisonous flowers. Such beauty is not something worth tasting. You shouldn't even smell it. You don't say. Plants are powerful guys. Wait a minute. Are you sure there was no one next to me? I don't know what you saw there, but I didn't see anyone. Hey, be careful with the botanicals. Let's go and catch that thieving flower before he goes too far away. Here it is, cactus parasite. Hush, you'll scare it off. Let's get it on my command at the count of three. One. It's not for you to run after green-eyed strangers. <laughs> Two. Three. Wait a sec. Oh. He's gone. Daco, what are you doing? Just a minute. I didn't tell any of you that she had green eyes. No? <laughs> didn't you mention it? 
Don't try and fool me. She was there, wasn't she? I didn't just imagine it, and she had eyes. Beautiful, green eyes. Let's all just calm down a little bit. I'm not going to calm down. I must find her, and you can keep searching for that plant. You can even head back home without me. Holy carrots, Taco and Joke's a joke, but... We've got to stop him. He's already getting away. And you won't stop me. Wait up! <laughs> Taco, don't be silly now! <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> Taco! Stay out of my way! This is my own personal choice! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But you still won't stop me. You saw her yourselves. Uh, I saw. That means you should understand me. I get it. Say goodbye to the others. For me. <sighs> Darko, wait. Let me just tell you something as a parting gift. Some form of your botany again. Well, some extra knowledge about this world could come in handy. Only botany. As everyone knows, in order to reproduce, plants need to exchange pollen with each other. In other words, pollinate. And not everyone can pollinate on their own. And that's where insects come to the rescue. To pollinate quicker and better, the flowers lure insects who are taken in by bright coloring and delicious aromas. But the most cunning of all is the flower by the name of Orchid Chilaglottis. This actress has learned to mimic the smells and appearance of the female wasp so precisely that wasps can't distinguish them. Everything would be fine except that after seeing the orchid, the male wasps completely stop paying attention to their girlfriend wasps and continue to live in this delusion until their final days. You see, orchids can look like a wasp and smell like a wasp, but she was never actually a wasp. These are pistols and stamens. Why are you so silent, Daco? Well, you're not a wasp after all. Unfortunately, no. Wops, for the sake of their own happiness, don't know what botany is. Taco! Mary! All right, botanist. You're the wise old master. Let's go home. Yeah, we were in this greenhouse too long. A detachment led by Donko ends up in a parallel universe inhabited by unusually developed plants. While others try to solve the problem of returning home, Donko continues his search for intelligent life forms among the local flora. Though unfortunately, his first contact ended in complete disappointment. Reckon that fluoride's somewhere near. Wow, that's a great view. Aha! Uh -huh. I can see his tracks. Here, we need a kind of funny joke about an overgrown weed, but nothing seems to come to mind. What do you mean, Joe? Everyone's fed up. Just one little problem. How do we get down there? some sort of long climbing rope. What do you think? 
To be honest, my mountaineering skills are not what they were. There's a better way. How about we just fly down? Fly? At our age? It's not good to laugh at the poor penguin. I'm still a bird. I didn't mean that. Ah, uh, so then what? Maybe fly down with the help of all these local overgrown flowers. Avoiding danger and pollinating are not the only things that plants need to think about. Another thing important in the life of any flower is to disperse the seeds of its future offspring. If this isn't solved in some creative way, then the entire species will grow in one place, which of course will become way too crowded. So plants have to adapt themselves in order to find ways to disperse their seeds, each thinking it up for themselves. For example, the Rafflesia has the help of elephants for this. They step on her flowers and transport her seeds around her. And the wind helps to sow the field. But there are plants that grow much farther. Their seeds have learned to fly. For example, a Javan cucumber seeds can fly up to 100 meters without any help from the wind. These seeds have even been copied for aviation. And for us to get down, the common <laughs> dandelion approach should do. Let go! I, I, I ain't going! We'll be smashed to pieces! I'm flying! I'm making a turn! <laughs> Let's remember our youth! Oh, what was I thinking? <laughs> there he is, over there. Let's take a look. Subject has been detected. Prepare for landing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Capricious. <laughs> <laughs> nice trip. Help! Hurry up, hurry up! He didn't make it far! I just keep thinking, is it at all possible to have intellect in plants? Or are all their actions simply functions to protect or, you know, reproduce? Depends on how you look at it. Maybe they have reasoning, but only in their own way. Plants do not have eyes, nose, and ears. They cannot move without muscles. But despite this, we have much more in common with them than it would seem. So, they may not have eyes, but they feel the warmth and the sunlight. This is especially true of sunflowers. Speaking to plants may not work, but it doesn't stop them from communicating with smells. If one flower gets attacked by pests, it sends a special signal to its neighbor to warn them of the danger and is then able to prepare, having summoned the necessary protective smell. Plants have other senses too. For example, they feel the position in space. Regardless of how you move the pot, the plant will still grow upwards. And as I have already said, plants also feel touch. And recent studies have shown that they may even have memory. They also say that plants react to sound. But this hasn't been scientifically proven. Although, <laughs> I still like to chat with my vegetables. It makes them grow even bigger. There it is. Let's go and get that thing already. Now wait. If we've learned anything about the local flora, it is not to act hastily. Yeah, yeah. It seems this overgrown weed is waiting for something. You know what I'm thinking? If there are such flowers around here, 
Then what kind of bugs do you think there are here? <laughs> here comes the answer to that question. <laughs> It looks like we'll have to save our thief. Otherwise, they'll just eat him together with our device. <laughs> hey, you get out of here, flower guzzlers! Shoo, shoo, shoo from here. Get going, you ungrown butterflies. This now is our only flower alone. Back off, it's not or yours. I'll give you a piece of my mind. Stop this right now. Yeah, you get out of here! This is our glade! Hey, cool how we drove them away. <laughs> it was even too easy somehow. Looks like it's not us they're afraid of. My lovely mother nature. Why didn't I think of it immediately? Do you mean you've remembered the earthly analogy again? Exactly. In the world of Flora, there is one amazing flower manipulator, Aqualegia. Unlike other flowers, the Aqualegia doesn't rely on its smells to scare off pests. It acts more cunningly and thoughtfully. The Aqualegia attracts the aroma of small insects, which are harmless to it, and then glues them to itself. These insects, in turn, attract larger spiders. Why is she doing this? For protection, of course. Now these spiders have become her personal security. Keeping her safe from gluttonous caterpillars, which can do her harm. And with such protection, the Aqualegia stays safe. Huh, then it turns out that this flower noid specifically lured us in to drive the caterpillars away. No, Crash. We are the bait. For someone even bigger. That's a weed. Give us our gadget. We really jumped into a Kaput. No, only a miracle will save us. It's you. L Listen. I don't know if you understand us or are just mimicking, but if you do, I beg you, don't allow your fellow intelligent life forms to be eaten. It's no use, Daco. It's unlikely that he'll understand us. I told you. So you understand me? Forgive me for doubting. I could not imagine that you... Surprise! I'm afraid that this will remain a mystery. Were those plants intelligent? And can we, in principle, determine that we have met another mind? Maybe it will be so different that it won't fit into our own understanding. Do you miss her a lot? What? Me? Oh, believe me, this is merely of scientific interest. From the point of view of our own cosmic solitude. Well, that's a shame. You don't even know you were right for each other. Speaking of which, what is your zodiac sign? Ah. Uh, Pin, when will you find a way to get us back to our world? We're working on it! <laughs> yeah, yeah! We are working! And I'd stay here a little longer. And the nice. Yeah. Yeah. 
I could live like this. D dessert? If you say so. Perchance, I'll dedicate a note to you. <laughs> Yes, but horoscopes, they're so unscientific. So why don't you tell me even more about this botany of yours? Eh, with great pleasure. <laughs>